Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Redden and today we are making a 200 year old recipe called a grand dish of snowballs. I have never seen a dessert recipe quite like this one before. Lots of old recipes are recognisable, like hot ice cream in this book is equivalent to bomb Alaska nowadays, but the grand snowballs seem to have been lost in time. First it has us making a crisp paste, and a paste is what we would now call a pastry in our recipe books. Rub one pound of butter and two pounds of flour very finely together. Then mix it with water into a paste, the stiffness of butter. This is the choice paste for tarts made of fresh fruit. That's a pretty standard pastry recipe that we'd still make today, but that's about all you're going to recognise about this dessert. Pair and take out the cores of seven large baking apples. To pair just means to peel it, so that's easy. But I find taking out the cores of whole apples with a knife quite tricky and a little bit dangerous. If the cuts are not lined up perfectly from top to bottom, then it's impossible to get the core out without breaking the apple in half, which is not what we wanted. So to solve this problem in the 1700s, they made their own gadget, an apple corer out of a hollowed out sheep's bone. I don't happen to have a sheep's bone handy, which I'm quite glad about, so I'm going to go with a modern apple corer to get this job done. Next we have to get the paste that we made and roll it out thin. Fill up the holes with quince or apricot marmalade. Now I haven't seen apricot marmalade so I'm just using half apricot jam and half homemade orange marmalade. It does take quite a bit to fill a hole of an apple, so it's just as well there's no sugar in the pastry or it might be very, very sweet. Now it says to cover each apple neatly with pastry. Now I'm not sure if it means just cover it over the top or to wrap it up completely, but because it's supposed to be a snowball I'm going with wrapping it up, which to be honest I'm not quite sure how to do. If I wrap it like you would with fabric and then squeeze the excess pastry together at the top and break it off, it all looks good until you turn it over and it's broken through the bottom. Several failed attempts later and I settled on reinforcing the base and cutting a cross shape, then wrapping the apple up and gently pressing those joins to make sure that they are all sealed. Set them on a baking sheet and bake them in a moderate oven. Great care must be taken that they do not crack. The cookbook says, Nothing can give so much pleasure at an entertainment as to observe a table sumptuously decorated with elegant and appropriate devices. They give splendour to the fate, an appetite to the most delicate, an amusement to all. This cookbook, A Treatise on Confectionery, was written by Joseph Bell in 1817. There is no information that I could find about Joseph or who his family were or when he was born. His book says that he was formerly confectioner to their royal highnesses, the Prince of Wales and the Duke of York. When the book was written, King George III was on the throne. So that would mean the Prince of Wales at that time was his eldest son and heir to the throne, George IV. And the Duke of York was of course his brother, Prince Frederick, who you may know from the nursery rhyme. Oh. The author Joseph Bell tells us that he himself had 35 years of experience working as a confectioner. I searched the Royal Household Archives and the only Mr Bell that I could find for that time period was a William Bell who worked as the first coachman. Now they did have a confectioner listed but his name was Mr France and there was even an assistant to the confectioner, Juliet France. Now, according to the records, they held those positions for decades. I imagine working in the royal household was quite a prized job. Joseph does mention in the book that he had a shop in Scarborough, but that's a long way from Buckingham Palace, so I don't know if royalty ever ate this dessert or not, but we'll keep following the recipe. 
Some of my pastry has split right open, but most of them are still sealed because it was overlapping. Now it says to prepare some icing as by former instructions. The recipe they have for icing is egg white and sugar whipped until stiff, so basically a meringue mixture. It says, when the apples are nearly cold, cover each with the icing in as neat a manner as you can. I'm just going to use some baking paper to smooth it out and make it look like a snowball. At the top of the ball, you may lay icing in a light manner to represent snow lately fallen. Now, we don't get snow here, so I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to look like when it's freshly fallen. Do you just add a little bit more on top? I don't know. Now we have to set them in a warm stove for half an hour, then place over them a silver web lightly spun. The recipe for a silver web says, take one pint of clarified sugar and a teaspoon of lemon juice, boil it in a small pan to the degree called carmeled. To test that, I'm just going to drop some into cold water. Now, first off, we're getting this soft ball stage where it's sticky, but it can still be rolled into a ball. Make sure you don't touch the liquid until it's been in the cold water because you will burn your fingers. 10 seconds later, and you can see it's now much thicker than it was just a few seconds ago. And if we just wait a little bit longer, then you can see that it is now thicker again. But just a few seconds after that, and it goes this golden caramel color, which is not what they wanted for this recipe. They wanted it clear or silver, but I don't want to waste the ingredients. So I'm just going to go with it as golden instead. Have ready a crocantly mold, neatly oiled with sweet oil. Then take a teaspoon and dip the shank of it into the sugar on one side of the pan. Take up a little sugar and throw the spoon backwards and forwards in the mold, leaving fine threads as possible. Continue to do so until the mold is quite full. Threads must be as fine as hairs. Now, I'm not sure what a crocantly mould is. If you do know, please share in the comments and enlighten us. I'm giving it a go with a metal bowl. Interestingly, because of the lemon juice, this is staying quite flexible instead of setting hard. I think I'll use the rest of it to make a larger piece. So now we're supposed to place this over our baked snowballs. It's a bit like stretchy fabric. It's just gonna slowly drape down over each one. Clear would definitely have been better for this than golden on these snowballs. I'm definitely wishing that I'd remade the spider web now, but too late. Time for the taste test. I guess if it was clear, it could look like ice or something. It still looks pretty cool. What does it taste like? Um, like sugar and passion fruit and orange and banana with a little bit of salt. I think you should taste it before you tell us what it tastes like. Oh, that's more solid than I thought. I thought it was just gonna crack right open. I thought you weren't supposed to eat the yellow snow. Mm, it does look like a snowball, but I did think initially it looked like one of those spider egg sacs, but giant. I like them. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they taste like, but I like the look of them. They make me feel happy. Get a nice big spoonful of everything, I think. It's very difficult to eat. <laughs> right, so meringue and sugar spiderweb on the outside. Oop, some sort of pastry. Oh. Oh yeah, that's good. Yum. Apple pie covered in meringue. That's, that's good. It was very good. That's delicious. That's a win. Like, I'd have this again. It's, it's delicious. Best 200 year old recipe so far. This should be in restaurants. I'll put all the recipe quantities on the how to cook that website so you can make it too. If you'd like to know how I created the artworks for this video, I'll put a short behind the scenes video on Patreon for my patrons. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you in the new year.